Hello everybody, Harrison again. Uh, and today we're going to be explaining kind of how to use the boot mode data logging screen. Um, the same kind of principles can be applied to things like MHD or if you're looking at data zap as well as they pretty much follow the same principles for data logging. Okay, so I've got a dyno data log loaded up here. Um, this is on an N20, however, this can be applied to an N55 or S55. Uh, B58 and B48 is virtually the same. They just have a lot more information in their data logs or can capture a lot more channels just due to the advanced features of that ECU. Um, really, the only difference here is that we're looking at four streams for, for timing instead of six. And realistically, that's the only difference between an N55's data log or an N20's data log or an N55's data log, etc. It's just purely the fact that we're looking at four instead of six cylinders. Um, otherwise, pretty much all the settings are the same. All the readouts from like your load, um, your MAF or your MAP sensor or your pre-throttle boost sensor, your duty cycle. Um, obviously, the S55 is going to have two duty cycles because it's twin turbo unless you've gone with a single turbo setup. So what we're we'll going to focus on here is that I noticed that the, there is quite a few people in the community that don't actually really understand how to read these data logs and how to basically understand if their car is operating well enough. So a data log can be useful because it can tell you how the tune's going. It can also tell you how healthy your car is. Data logs can also sometimes not be useful in the sense that they can't give you a confirmed diagnosis of what the problem is if there is a problem. They can to a point, but they're not a clear definitive saying, like if your timing's being you know, pulled by five or six degrees in one cylinder, like yes, it might indicate there's an issue with that cylinder, but it doesn't give you a clear indication of what that issue might be. And at the end of the day, you still need to come down to a physical hardware diagnosis to actually come across the potential problem with the motor itself. So what we're gonna look at here is I'm gonna go left to right, and we're just gonna kind of go into some details. So. As you can see here, this data log, this is, um, I think, the eighth pull on the dyno. Now, what we've we've started the log here around about 2,000 RPM. Now, I know the for some reason there's a bit of a bug with boot mode data log, so even though the pedal percentage stays zero for the whole log, ignore that. It's a bug with the data logging program. If you look down the bottom there, um, we've got dot number, the third last dot, or throttle angle percentage, it's 100%, and it's 100% because it's reflective of the actual throttle pedal. Obviously, if the throttle angle percent change from 100 to say 80, then there's throttle closure happening. And generally, during wide open throttle, it's probably not because the user's lifted their foot off the pedal. It's more probably because the ECU is trying to inflict a, um, a safety precaution, essentially. So the main thing to kind of take into account when you look at these data logs is the first thing that I normally look at is the ignition timing because that's that's a fairly important kind of feature. And then I look at and boost as well. So I'll put in some notes here and basically when it comes to your ignition timing, you want it to be as clean as possible on all cylinders. If, for example, and as you can see here, if we're looking at the screen now, we've got six, six, and 4.8 and six. Usually if a timing pull is more than three degrees in a given cylinder, then there is either an issue with fuel quality or there's a there's an issue with um, air distribution, air temps, the quality of the fuel or the octane rating of the fuel, or you could be running too much boost to the octane rating of the fuel. Cylinder three is 1.2 degrees off, cylinders one, two, and four. So it's not really too much to worry about. And generally on pump gas, honestly, timing isn't always gonna be as clean as possible just because pump gas qualities vary greatly. Um, and pump gas generally can also lead to quite a rise in the cylinder temperature, cylinder pressure temperature. Anyway, so as you can see, if we go along here, the timing sort of drops a bit. Now, probably what I'd be more concerned with here is cylinder one now is dropping by about almost almost three degrees, but then it recovers. Now, this is pretty clean timing, really. I mean, if you look at it, pretty much throughout the whole run, especially in the upper RPM, as we hit, you know, 5,000 RPM, etc., all the way to 6,000 RPM, is timing's clean. Now, we stopped this data run after six gram because on the N20 on this particular setup, the car wasn't making any more power after 6,000 RPM anyway, so there was no point to data log it. We just got off the throttle because after six grand in, a, in this tune, all the um, basically boost target settings, etc., start to drop. So then the next thing you look at here is we've got um, our third top channel, which is boost pre-throttle, and it's in PSI. Um, 
that's because the measurement setups on this data log recorder was for imperial units of measurement. You can in boot mode actually change it to metric if you want to. So an important thing to take away here is that boost pre-throttle is measured from the T-map sensor before the throttle body. On N20s, that, that's a three and a half bar sensor. Uh, N55, it's a two, two and a half bar sensor or thereabouts. Um, so basically what that means is that sensor can't read any more than about 21, 22 PSI, give or take depending on, on the quality of the sensor. So generally what that means is that after that PSI boost, it, it caps out on the N20, that's not a problem because it can read a, pretty much up to about 36 PSI of boost. Uh, relative, that's gauge pressure, mind you. This is all gauge pressure boost that you're reading in the logs. You're not reading absolute, unless you tell the car to run, read absolute mode, um, in, which is an option in the data logging section. So one thing to, to note here is, as you can see, we've got boost pressure target, and it's in PSI at 21.8, and our boost pressure pre-throttle is 20.9. So that means boost is under our target, and the boost pressure deviation is essentially the deviation between boost pre-throttle and target. So this is important because I'll get into further detail in a second with this, but unfortunately due to an issue with the F-Series MEVD-17 ECUs, you can't actually see a boost target higher than 22.5 PSI. Now that doesn't mean the ECU can't target more pressure, it can't. The ECU can target up to 5 bar of boost, theoretically, if, if, if the engine could take that. Now, this is only an issue for the MEV D17 ECUs, which is found in like your N55, N13, N20, S55, um, the N62s or S63s, so those sort of motors. Anything that's in an F-Series platform. The B48, B38, and B58, those motors have an MG1 ECU, and that doesn't seem to have an issue targeting, or at least showing a target boost pressure higher than 22 PSI. Um, however, what's more important here is that I'm more inclined to show you and teach you guys the issues with this older system because most people have this model car and generally this is only really an issue on these older cars or these older motors over the newer b-series platform so when boost pressure if you're targeting let's say 24 pound of boost on your tune okay you're going to be seeing boost pressure target at 22.5 psi regardless you're not going to see it anymore and you might go oh but the car's not targeting 22 pound and then you see boost pre-throttle let's say boost pre-throttle is 24 pound of boost then you go damn you know my boost pressure is actually two psi over my target like why is my throttle not closing why isn't my car trying to be safe etc well this is where the boost deviation channel comes in boost deviation is pretty much what tuners use to determine whether or not boost is actually hitting their target when they're targeting more than 22 and a half psi so for example i have a tune set up that targets 24 pound of boost at 4500 rpm so to ensure that my boost is on target my boost pressure deviation should read zero because that means that my boost pre-throttle is on my target and even though boost pressure target says 22.5 i know that's a true target so that's what you need to understand when it comes to reading a data log when it comes from a boost perspective and boost target percentage. Unfortunately, it's just an issue with the data logging program. It just physically can't read data in the boost pressure target channel any higher than 22.5. So it'll just cap out, which is annoying because then you have to kind of, you know, rely on boost pressure deviation, which is pretty accurate, but there are some discrepancies that can occur and you can end up chasing your tail a little bit if you're a tuner, but that is pretty much what tuners have to do to kind of understand and make sure that their target is targeting a target boost pressure, whether it's 24, 26, 28, 30 pound of boost, um, and that they, they, they can no longer rely on the boost pressure target channel. So obviously this is all in the Imperial. So in coolant temperature, which is in Fahrenheit, um, and then we've got engine speed, which is pretty self-explanatory. High pressure fuel pump target, or HPFP. So that's the target pressure in the ECU. And then obviously actual is the actual red pressure on the fuel line, by the continental sensor in the common rail fuel rail. Um, that's, yeah, pretty much 2900 or 2800 PSI is you know pretty close to the standard 20 MPA or 200 bar kind of target limit. Um, IETs, which is in Fahrenheit for this log, it's 85 degrees Fahrenheit. And then you've got your ignition timing. Then we come down to knock. Now, generally speaking, if you look out through this whole log and I skim through it, you'll never see that knock go to above zero. 
which you might think that's great. But if I go in here and I start turning off all these channels, so you can actually turn off which channels. So if you want to try and focus on data a little bit easier or particular types of data, go through and you can start turning all this off. Now, all I want to enable is not detected. Now, if you have a look here, look, we've got one and we've got oh, another one. There's, so there's two ones. So that means that there's there's knock and that's on a threshold of one. So you can knock normally measures in 0.5 or like it's normally in increments of 0.5. But if I go back in and turn all this back on, you can start to see knock starts to get smaller and smaller on the screen because it's trying to scale all the graphs properly. Scale all this in. And not get so small to the point that in some logs, especially data logs that are capturing a lot of information, such as like on the B series motors where generally you'll be recording 40 or 50 channels if you're a tuner, um, you can sometimes never see these knocks. Even though they're actually there, you just can't see it because the way that the graph is scaled, it's scaled it down so small that it's really hard for you to see. So that's just one thing to take in mind. If you can't see a knock, turn all the channels off, just see the knock channel and just see if there is any knock. That's my word of advice. Um, the next channel that we're going to look at is Lambda AFR and Lambda Actual. So Lambda AFR is your target, the ECU's target Lambda or, or air to fuel ratio. Um, now, mind you, this is being read in air to fuel ratio, not being read in Lambda. Okay? That's because we're measuring from an imperial measure, unit of measurement standpoint. So Lambda Actual Bank 1 is the Lambda recorded or the air to fuel ratio rather recorded in Bank 1 of your oxygen sensor. Bank 1 O2 sensor is the sensor before the catalytic converter. Bank 2 is the sensor after the catalytic converter. And that's generally the same sensor that also triggers your cell light when you run a decat. So as you can see, we're pretty close to target. This will fluctuate a little bit here and there. And as you can see, we hit a pretty lean spot in this tune about 3500. Now, that to me looks like if you look at the high pressure fuel pump as well, you can kind of see the pressure fluctuate. So that to me indicates that there's a, there was a fueling problem there. And as you can see, AFR jumps right up and then drops right down. So that to me looks like a bit of a, a fueling issue. Going on further down, as you can see here, the next kind of channel that I want to touch on, and this is a fairly important kind of topic, is load actual and then load target. Now these are... In, used in combined or in conjunction with each other. Load actual rel in, in brackets percent is basically how much of the target load the car is reaching. So 64% of target load. So if you're targeting, let's say you want to target 250 load, then load target rel or relative percent shows 64.5. That means that you'd be targeting 64.5 of that 250 load, okay? Now the next part, load target, technically shows you your load target. Unfortunately, and this is a pain, anything after 191.3 or 191.25 on a data logging perspective will just blank out. It won't be able to read it. So you might go, oh, I'm only targeting, this doesn't make sense. Why am I only targeting 65% of 191.3? No, you're actually probably more or less targeting 65.6% .6 of 230 or 220 load, but you can't see that because after 191.3, the data logger won't show anything further much like the boost pressure target channel it's just an, it's just an error it's a glitch with the, the data logger something you have to just get used to now there is a bit of a band-aid sort of fix to this if you enable in the and i'll show this now data log config so this is your default data log channels that you can enable or disable okay if you go into other channels get rid of that warning then you can see this here talk target now this basically shows you the load ceiling um, value that the car is operating out of. Now, this can be perceived as your load target because in some ways or another, load ceiling can be used as, depending on how the tune is set up. Now, this does vary because it depends on how the tune is set up. If the tuner is using the load ceiling table to tune the car because there's multiple methods of tuning a car, then you can look at the load, uh, the torque target channel as essentially the new load target. Now this doesn't work in all cases, but at least it gives you a pretty good idea of the tar of the load or the cylinder fill percentage the car is trying to achieve. And it gives you a pretty good idea of essentially what that 64 or that 80 or 90% in the load type actual relative percent box it might be referring to. So if your torque target says 230, 
and your load actual relative says 85%, then you're probably more or less targeting something closer to 85% of 230 load, okay? Um, now, you might be going, well, what's load? Load is how you tune these ECUs, um, and it's not always the case. 220 load doesn't equal 22 PSI. It depends on a lot of other factors, and things can change it. On N55 land, yes, generally speaking, a value such as 210 load usually equals close to 20 or 21 PSI, but that depends because there's things like your VE, engine VE, volumetric efficiency, boost multipliers. Like there's a lot of tables that the ECU goes together and goes through to work out boost based on a load target. Um, so, but it's it's just a, it's a convenient thing to know, and having the torque target percentage enabled is. At least for these ECUs, it, it's a godsend. On the B series motors, it actually doesn't have a lot of these issues, and you can see true load target um, and load actual and load limit as well. You can see it, it's a lot more informative on the new ECUs. Now, coming down to Lear, low pressure fuel pump actual raw PSI. This is essentially the pressure read from the low pump fuel pump, uh, low pressure fuel pump that's located in the fuel tank. Um, very rarely does this drop. If it does drop, then it's a pretty clear indication that you need to be upgraded the pump. Um, the next thing we have is MAF LB a minute. So LB a minute is the unit of measurement. Um, typically, these issues are reading kgh. However, this is imperial measurement, as I've said. So MAF. Now, this is not measured MAF at the MAF sensor. This is calculated MAF based on the fancy load calculations done in the ECU. So this is helpful for tuners so that they know what part of the X or Y axis for a given boost-related table the ECU might be looking at. So for example, wastegate duty cycle target, and as you can see, we have a wastegate duty cycle channel down the bottom there. In the wastegate duty cycle table, one of the axis, the x-axis, is MAF, essentially. It's, it is measured in kgh, however, MAF is the x-axis. So if you wanted to see, okay, I'm targeting 93 duty cycle, um, where that would fall, you'd look at the wastegate duty cycle table and go, okay, well, you know, under the 20 LB a minute section, Targeting 93% duty cycle means that I'm in this section of the y-axis of that table. So that's that's MAF LB a minute is calculated math. It's not actual red math at the math sensor. Now, mind you, the math sensor is pretty much ignored during wide open throttle because you enter closed loop fueling mode, which pretty much relies off of the MAP or mass air pressure sensor um, or TMAP sensor, depending on what you've set in the tune. In the tune, you can actually tell the ECU which sensor you want boost target to be based off of most of the time it's the tmap sensor um, so yeah in, in closed loop mode or, or when you go wide open throttle you're actually the map map maf sensor is completely ignored or math the next channel we've got here is map psi so this is the boost pressure sensor or map sensor in the actual intake manifold unfortunately even if you do upgrade the sensor to a three and a half bar because it's by default a two and a half bar on electronic waste gates uh, cars on pneumatic waste gated cars this actually reads vacuum because of the whole vacuum system that's set up so this kind of only really applies to either ewg or electronic waste gate cars however on electronic waste gate cars you can upgrade the sensor to a three and a half bar sensor but because of an issue with the data logging screen it doesn't read higher than 22.5 psi the sensor does and the ECU does read higher, however the data logger won't show higher than 22.5. So for example, on my N20 I installed a 3.5 bar sensor in the, in the actual manifold and for a period of time I had told my tune to target boost based off of the ma manifold pressure sensor to and ignored the TMAP sensor. So yes, whilst I had installed a 3.5 bar sensor in my manifold and whilst the ECU was targeting my boost and reading boost pressure off of that sensor, the data logger would never show higher than 22.5. It was just an issue with the data logger, it wasn't an issue with the ECU, but it makes it hard from a tuning perspective. If you target boost off of the MAP sensor in the manifold, and the data logger is not going to show you the actual pressure above that, then you don't know if there's an issue, what's actually going on. And whilst the ECU might go, okay, like I'm targeting, let's say, 25 pound of boost off of the manifold pressure sensor instead of the TMAP. And, you know, okay, he's got a three and a half bar sensor, that's all good, I can read, you know, I can read 25 PSI, no problems, because there's no limit, and I can read that on a three and a half bar sensor, that's cool, I'm going to target my boost off of that. And if the ECU reads 30 pound of boost at the MAP sensor, it'll close the throttle, that's cool. All the functions work the same, however, because in the logs you can't see past 22.5, you might get a throttle closure, and you might go, well, why am I getting a throttle closure? 
you don't know if the boost is is higher than what it needs to be. Now you might go, okay, well Harry, I can still read the boost pre-throttle sensor and that might give me a clear indication that, you know, if the boost pre-throttle sensor reads 30 PSI and my target is 25 pound boost, then the chances uh, that the MAP sensor are go is going to be reading close to 30 pound of boost is pretty true. And that, that is true to a point. Now generally across the throttle body, there's about a 0.7 PSI um, pressure loss because there's a rest the, the throttle body is essentially a restriction. Okay, so that means if you're reading 22.5 at the pre-throttle sensor, you're probably reading close to 21.8 or 9 at the MAP sensor. So it can throw off your target a little bit. You know, you might target 22.5 PSI and it bases it off the pre-throttle sensor, but by the time it gets into the manifold, it may not actually be 22.5. It might be, you know, 21.9. So that's just something you need to take into account. And that's the thing too. And when the throttle closes, it creates a restriction in the line. So what that means is that it's not much like a hose. When you kink a hose, the pressure coming out of the hose now changes. The same thing happens in the car. When the throttle closes, all of a sudden boost at pre-throttle is going to spike because you've created a restriction in the line and all that boost can't really go anywhere, so it just builds up. And then you might have 25 PSI and you go, oh no, the car's taking 25 PSI. But then you look at throttle and it says the throttle might only be 30% open. Well, then that's why you're at 25 PSI. And the chances of that boost entering the manifold are extremely low. However, the kind of conundrum here is that if you have got a throttle closure and pre-throttle reads 30 PSI, but the map sensor is blanked out at 22.5 in the data logs, even if you have a high reading map sensor, then you actually don't know truly what the real boost pressure in the manifold is regardless of the fact that the throttle is closed. Because I can tell you now, I have seen situations where we've had a vacuum pressure operated gauge connected to the map sensor. So there's a little adapter that you put on the manifold and you plug the factory sensor in and then you plug a vacuum line into a gauge where the pre-throttle sensor might show 30 pound of boost, the target boost pressure is 21. Okay, the throttle closed for whatever reason, whether it's traction loss or the ECU's detected an anomaly. Throttle's closed, throttle's only open, 30% open. However, our map sensor in the data logs is capped at 22.5, which makes me think, okay, boost is obviously over 22 pound of boost, regardless that the throttle's closed. And then on our vacuum operated gauge, pressure gauge in the car, we've seen 26 or 25 PSI. So it's still over and that could still lead to an issue. So when you're trying to diagnose and fault find and try and fix issues and stuff with the tune or with the car itself, it's hard to diagnose when the data log doesn't read higher. However, that is kind of the basis of the MAP sensor and the MAP reading. Like I said, you can increase it, unfortunately, on the F-Series cards, at least with the N55, N20, etc. Not the B-Series motors. You do have issues with certain data logging channels, not being able to physically show data above a certain amount. It's just an issue with the actual ECU software itself. It's not to do with boot mode. It's just to do with the CAN bus, which is essentially the communications link to you and the OBD port just physically not being able to show data larger than a fixed given reading such as 22.5 or 191.3 however you still can target above that no dramas the ECU is very much capable of targeting five bar of pressure as a max um, moving on now is the next reading mass flow HFM so HFM is hot film mass so that is actually the this is the true MAF reading at the MAF sensor. This is exactly what's going through your intake. This is what's going past the MAF sensor. A thing to note here is, like I said, the MAF sensor is ignored during wide open throttle. However, if you want to see what the engine is flowing air volume wise, that's where you would look at the mass flow sensor. However, bear in mind, um, at least on the, on the N20 and the N55, it's a bit different, but the N20 has a maximum amount of MAF that the sensor can read, and it can read up to about 36 or 38 uh, pounds per minute of air as max flow which means if you want to read past that, you need to upgrade the sensor on the N55 somewhere around the 46 to 48 mark. Um, it's not really a problem during wide open throttle because, I mean, the sensor's not used, so if it blanks out, that's fine. Uh, however, it is useful information to know because you can give the tuner especially a good idea of what the turbo is doing and where you are kind of sitting in the, in the um, load range as such. Uh, relative to the calculated MAF. So as you can see here, my calculated MAF is 20.3 and the hot mass flow HFM is 22.5. So what that means is that the ECU is targeting um, or expecting the car essentially to flow 20 pounds per minute, but what's actually happening is the car's flowing 22.5. Now because we're not in open loop mode, the car doesn't really care. It's not going to close throttle or 
try and limit the car because you know the reading is higher than what it's calculated that's it's fine it's going to ignore it it's just there for peace of mind and just so that the tuner knows what's happening your next channel pretty obvious oil temperature and fahrenheit uh, relative air filling that's to do with your volumetric efficiency ceiling essentially that caps at 255 percent um if it doesn't cap at 255 percent then it generally means that you're hitting a, a limit of some sort throttle angle as i space touched on before that's 100 percent means open and anything under that is starting to close uh, wastegate duty cycle bank 1% is 93, so that just means that the, the wastegate is 93% closed. Now, one thing to note, on a stock system, that would mean it's actually 93% closed. On aftermarket turbo systems, sometimes the actual actuator arm isn't adjusted right. So the tune might say 93% closed, but in actuality, because the, adjust the adjustment arm on the actual wastegate itself is not accurately adjusted, the true wastegate duty cycle could be 87% or it could be 95%. It could be higher. There is a learning process via BMW software tools to actually accurately get that adjustment nut on the wastegate actuator arm correct. Um, but I have seen on some cars it might show, oh, I'm at 100% duty cycle and it's still not making more boost. What the hell is going on? And then they find the actuator arm is severely loose and it's not adjusted right. So then they retighten it, readjust it, and then all of a sudden to make target boost it's 80 percent duty cycle that's just something you need to take into account um, high duty cycle is also not good because if the wastegate is more closed it means that more air is flowing around the volutes in the turbo or spinning the turbine wheel which is good to a sense but it's also bad because then it means that the air in the exhaust manifold has to go through the turbine which is a restriction which also means that you hit a restriction when it comes to making high power High power requires lots of free-flowing air, and turbos are good, but you only want a certain amount of that air to flow through the actual volutes and spin the turbine wheel. You want the rest of it to enter out the wastegate, essentially, because that way you're not clogging up the system. You're not trying to shove all this air into one small space. You're giving excess air a space to go, which means that you can promote more airflow in the engine. Now... The last channel here that I'll touch on is boost target actual. This is actually only enabled or only shows up on your data logging screen when you have the boost pressure deviation turned on. This essentially is a PTF or boot mode related feature and essentially what boot mode or pro tuning fix have attempted to do is actually show you what your estimated target boost pressure is in relation to the boost deviation. So as you can see at the top here, our boost pressure is 20 PSI, our deviation is 1.7 PSI, and now conveniently, our target pressure is 21.5. That's good because it at least tells us that, you know, the sensor's not blanked out. We can, and, and the target pressure is, is under our 22.5 PSI kind of target showing cap as such. The boost target actual channel is just designed to kind of automatically do the math for you so you know what the boost target is and i say this because if we get up here to like say good example here maybe not like let's say here right at 22 psi let's say that the boost pressure was 24 psi our boost target was 24 psi our boost pressure target psi channel is only showing 22 and a half but then the boost target actually is showing 24 psi because the boost pressure deviation is showing zero when our boost pressure three pre-throttle is 24 psi so the boost target actual channel is essentially just automatically does the math for you. If boost deviation is anything other than zero and boost pressure target is capped at 22.5, but boost pressure pre-throttle is higher than your target, then boost target actual will tell you your actual target by putting the math of the deviation, boost deviation channel and boost pressure pre-throttle together to work out your true boost target. So this is just a boot mode specific feature and it is a virtual channel essentially it's not a real channel so it does mean that it can occasionally be inaccurate so i know that was a bit of a mouthful to go through i encourage you all to rewatch if you do get a bit lost or confused um, what i'm going to touch on though last is just the boot boot mode data logging config screen um, again your default channels are pretty much channels that most people will be interested in in looking at um, and they're generally all the people really care for uh, on the N55, N20, N13, S55, etc., um, there's a max of 36 out of 36 channels that can be enabled at any one time. Now, boost deviation by default is one channel. The boost target actual channel I just spoke to you about is also another channel. So that means if you're at 36 out of 36, the boost target actual channel won't display. So if you want it to display, you need to have 35 or 34 out of 36 enabled. Um, and in all honesty, there are probably some tables in here that you could actually turn off. 
Um, so if we go into other channels here, go ignore that. You can enable some of these extra channels. Now, I will tell you right now, not all these channels are supported on certain ECUs. So you might find, oh, I've turned all this on, and that's great and everything, but then you'll find that, you know, the ECU doesn't actually show any information for it. And that's kind of why you need to understand that having some channels enabled is going to be detrimental to your data locking experience. So my advice is to just enable what you need to enable and disable what you don't need. I mean, you don't need vehicle speed, really. I mean, you know what your, your vehicle speed is. You might want to look at oil pressure and oil pressure target. You may want to enable, obviously, boost pressure deviation, as I stated. You know, you might need, I mean, the B series motors pretty much support all of these anyway. But you might want to know, you know, oh, I don't know, I want to know what my water pump temp is or water pump speed or whatever, like for whatever reason, that's great. So you can enable uh, quite a lot of other channels. Um, but that pretty much concludes it for this boot mode or slash, you know, BMW tuning related data logging video. Um, I hope you guys all enjoyed and I will see you guys later.